I know the material with which I'm working. The material is cedar. I go to British Columbia, to Vancouver Island, to pick the trees that the mills then cut for me. They cut them into four by four cedar beams, neutral beams that I then work with. The cedar is soft, it's porous, so that when I put whatever coloring I put on it, or whatever graphite I put on it, it really receives it uh, in a very generous way. It absorbs moisture, it absorbs the glues that we put on it. All the gentle marks get registered. We can nibble away at the cedar. One can get organic drama in there very easily because it's so soft. You can scoop it. It's also a sexy color. It's pink. Materials are important to me. I have used the fourth stomach of a cow considerably. I have also used felt. Uh, and I deliberately sometimes choose materials that feel diametrically opposite of the cedar because this puts a wrench in my thinking, which I need. I never make drawings for my sculptures. I think drawings are deadly in my case. I've made very, very few models. I've only made them when I absolutely had to. Uh, when there was um, a federal commission or a state commission that required this model. Otherwise, it's a complete bore for me. It has nothing to do with the reality of the sculpture. The aliveness with which my surfaces end up being have nothing to do with what you can draw, have nothing to do with what you can make a model of. Uh, it's not just a matter of amplifying the size, it's a matter of imbuing it, you know, with a way for it to breathe, it's imbuing it with a way for it to feel alive. The moment I make these models, I toss them, I have no use for them. Even if it's a four-story sculpture like the one I made at, at the Queen's Family Courthouse in Jamaica. It was made full scale out of cedar first. Following the fashion has never been my way. That's not to say that I haven't learned a lot from the people that preceded me, that I haven't poured over the work of uh, Rembrandt, his etchings, that I haven't poured over the work of de Kooning, and that I haven't really um, understood and known the works of the minimalists that were there when I first came to New York City, to Columbia University. But as far as, as style or, or, or what is in vogue at the time, whether they're art movements, whether it's clothing, it, it just doesn't, TV programs, I don't even watch TV. Um, I don't know much about the popular culture it doesn't feel like it really touches me or it doesn't feel like it has an effect on my thinking or on my work. I feel like I dug a groove that belongs to me. I'm not a part of a group. I'm not a part of a movement. I'm not a part of an institution. And I can't tell you how important this is to me, that it's really my groove. The thing that really matters is how interested I am in seeing through the ideas that I have in my studio, how alive I'm kept in the studio by what I do, and once that doesn't happen, I don't want to be doing work anymore, I don't want to be doing my artwork anymore, but as I speak, I already have in mind what kind of hoists I would need if my legs give in, you know, if I get really old. Because all that really matters is that your mind continue to function and that you continue to want and that you continue to have these needs and they unfold in front of you. But whether it's uh, in vogue or whether it's just something I have no control over and that it is my life and I really want to own it in my way. I don't want it directed by something that isn't mine or that doesn't feel credibly mine. You don't feel alive every moment of the day. You go for it, though. 
you mobilize things around you that make that possibility happen. It might not happen today, it might not happen for a week. You know, there are ways in which I delay when I feel I just can't, especially after I finish a large piece. I'm kind of sucked out, I'm depleted, but I keep making conditions by which I can make that spark come to life again. And my conditions are not simple conditions. If you saw my studio, you, you would know that my conditions are not simple. But it doesn't really matter. I do what I have to do. I clean up as much as I can from my life to make time for my work, because my work is very time consuming. And to tell you the truth, it's healing for me. It's, it, it makes me stay healthy.